So all we have to do is to add a nice amount of glue, squish it in place, apply some gentle pressure for a few seconds and voila, the case is complete. Welcome back to another custom 3D printed case build. And I know I say this every time, but this is really my favorite build so far. And I'm just gonna go straight into the details. I know that for many of you, size does matter. And the size of this case is 460 by 250 by 250 millimeters, which is quite big for an ITX build. But on the other hand, this means we have room for good airflow, allowing for low CPU temperatures and quiet operation. This case features efficient bottom to top airflow, and I chose to call this case the big boy. The name was actually inspired by this two year old comment from one of my first videos I ever made. It can hold graphics cards up to 300mm in length and a 240mm AIO liquid cooler or an air cooler up to 140mm height to keep your CPU nice and cool. I absolutely love how this case fits into my mostly black and grey theme. And this case is intended to replace my own main rig which used to be this 3D printed micro ATX case that some of you may remember from one of my previous videos. This case was designed using Shaper 3D and this video is not sponsored or anything, but I just want to say I really like working with this program. All parts were printed on a Creality CR10 V2, which is not really a CR10 anymore, because I have literally changed every single part that makes this printer a CR10. The print time for this case will obviously vary a lot depending on what printer you have, but let's just say, with my slow printer, I managed to print every single part in around 4 days total, with the printer running almost 24 hours a day and that was with a 0.6 nozzle and 0.4 layer height. The filament used in this case is roughly 2.5 to 3 kilograms in total, assuming all parts are printed successfully. But this may also vary depending on your specific settings. Now, let's look at how to build this thing. The main chassis consists of two main parts that mount together to form the frame that all the parts later will attach to. These are clamped together using these printed 45 degree washers and an M5 by 40 mm machine screw and a nut. I made these at an angle to make printing easier and to eliminate the need for support, although it would have probably worked out just fine if I made these flat too. But why make it simple when you can make it complicated, right? Once all corners are attached, the frame now feels really rigid and we're ready to install the bottom part of the case. I know you guys really hate it when I thread directly into the plastic, so this one's for you guys. M4 threaded inserts. The bottom piece can then be screwed in place with some M4 machine screws. Even on the other side we add more threaded inserts, but don't get too excited because using too much force will lead to failures like this. You just want to go gentle and slow. For the next part though, you're gonna want to go hard. To force these motherboard standoffs into the little holes to make sure they keep our mobos securely in place. This entire mounting plate then slides right into the main chassis like a glove in a sandal. And guess what? What? More threaded inserts. And speaking of complicating things, here we're using M3 instead of M4. But since I don't want you guys to cancel me, I'll update the design to take M4 instead, for your convenience. You are welcome. So this is the mounting plate for our 240mm liquid cooler, and it has to be installed at an angle like this, then pivoted into place before pushing it down, locking it into place. Next we can flip our case over to the side because we need to install the bottom fan. And what size fan will we be using here? Is it maybe 40mm? Nope. What about 60mm? 92? 120? Gotta be 140 then. Wait. That means we're gonna have to use the big one. 200mm. That's like... Meaning that... That's like 20cm. That's almost as long as my toothbrush. Wow. The fan just drops in place and the cable needs to be fed through this beautiful looking hole that I totally remembered to add when designing this. Don't worry, the hole is added to the design now. You are welcome. Once that's installed, we can add this honeycomb mesh that basically just serves the purpose of preventing cables and other stuff from touching the spinning fan. 
This little elevated area is where we want to install our SFX power supply, which in this case is an 850 watt power supply from Cooler Master, which we can just screw from behind. For convenience, before things get really tight, it's a good idea at this point to add the power cables for the GPU and the motherboard main power. Speaking of motherboard, the motherboard used in this build is an Asus ROG B460i, which has an i9-10900K installed. We also have 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM, a 250GB M.2 for the operating system, and another 1TB mounted to the back for general storage. For cooling the i9 we have an NZXT Z53 240mm AIO liquid cooler that does a great job at keeping the CPU cool. To install these two parts we first need to flip our case over to the side with the standoffs facing upward. Then we can simply drop our motherboard and AIO into place and install the necessary screws. I thought this project was going so well until I came across a big problem. The motherboard isn't even touching the standoffs and I realized that I totally forgot that the IO shield on the motherboard extends down below the motherboard a bit, causing it to hit the main chassis. My quick fix to this was simply to add another layer of standoffs, which turned out pretty good and luckily it didn't really cause any problems for me or the need to reprint anything, especially since the IO shield on my motherboard was permanently attached. But this is not really the case on all motherboards, so I have fixed the design and added a bracket that helps to keep those loose IO shields in the correct position. You are welcome. Once the motherboard was finally in place, it was time to add some cables, and honestly I just skipped showing you the wiring part as it's pretty much straightforward as any other build. Just attached all fans, power cables, used some zip ties to keep the cables away from the fans and stuff like that. One thing worth noting is to add a fan extension cable out the top to connect to the second chassis fan we'll be installing later. Also an extension cable for the power button is smart to add, as the power button is going to be added at the top as well. Our GPU will be connected using a 300mm PCI Express riser cable. The cable simply clicks into the motherboard and we can carefully bend it over around the back of the motherboard, then add another 90 degree bend to prepare it for our vertically mounted GPU. The GPU used in this build is a Gigabyte 3070, and it's attached to this bracket that actually has multiple mounting holes to accommodate for different card thicknesses, but the middle hole will be the one to use for most cards. You also need some kind of washer or flat printed piece to clamp the other side of the GPU in place. We can now lower the GPU into the chassis and attach the PCI Express cable before securing the bracket in place with four screws. As I mentioned before, I'm using M3 here, but these will be M4 for the final design. Next, we can attach our GPU power cables and we're ready to move on to my favorite part of any build, which is installing the side panels. These side panels are made out of 20% honeycomb infill that's printed with no top and bottom layers, leaving just the infill as a mesh allowing for good airflow. These just slide into place like a slice of pizza down my throat and it really starts to complete the look of this build. Just make sure no cables are pinched on the way down and we're ready to install the top of the case. The top part of the case has these grooves and these are intended to help align with the top part of the side panels. It simply drops into place and can be attached using an M4 screw in each corner to the main body. You may wonder. How are we going to plug in the display cables if the graphics card is mounted vertically inside of the case? Well, it's actually quite simple. There's a big hole in the back of the case, we can insert a cable at an angle and it will lead into the bottom of the case, which we can then stick your hand down and into and pull up the cable and plug it in. It's a good idea to gently bend the cable a little bit to prevent it from hitting the top fan we're going to install later. So I wanted the top part of the case to be easily removable by using magnets, but I found that using some flathead wood screws instead worked just as well for the lower part. The magnets can then stick to the head of the metal screws and by using screws instead of magnets we actually now get the option to manually adjust the fan height to compensate for different fan thicknesses, which is much more convenient than just using magnets at a fixed height. For the fan mount part, we need to attach 4 pieces of 3x8mm magnets. First, I tried using some glue to keep them in place, but I quickly realized it was a bad idea and the magnets would much rather stick to my fingers than the print, so I ended up just melting them in place with my soldering iron. 
Obviously, we also need a mesh filter for the top exhaust, and this mesh is made just like the side panels out of 20% honeycomb infill. It's also got a hole for a 12mm power button as well as a notch in the back and you'll see what that notch is for later. To camouflage the screws a bit, it's a good idea to use some black computer fan screws here. We can now take this entire assembly, plug in the fan and the power button cables and simply drop the whole thing into the main body and the magnets will find the screw heads and keep it in place. The notch in the back is there so that we can reach down with our finger or a screwdriver to pull out the entire top assembly, allowing for easy access to the inside of the case. Optionally, if you don't want to have a long display port cable hanging out the back, you can always get one of these 90 degree extension adapters that just plugs into the GPU and you can feed it down next to the GPU out the rear hole, giving easy access to the display port if you intend on moving your PC around a lot. Even though the bottom fan is not really visible, I designed this mesh filter that is attached to the bottom of the case fan as well, mainly for safety reasons. Now there's only one thing left to do, and that is to attach the logo. The logo consists of two parts that have to be glued in place. This is actually my new channel logo and it's my way of marking my designs from now on. The logo is intended to look like the letters M and U, but also have the shape of a 3D cube which symbolizes that many of my projects use cube-like shapes. I wanted to make something clean and simple and I think it turned out pretty good. Also, adding a clean logo to the case really helps to fill in the otherwise pretty boring flat surface to make the case look much less like a generic homemade project and more like an actual branded case, which I absolutely love and I hope you guys like it too. With the logo in place, the case is now complete. And apart from some layer lines and a few printing defects, I'm really happy and surprised at how well this project actually turned out. It's minimalistic and elegant with its rounded edges and I think that the logo just really adds to that premium look, especially considering that this is a 3D printed case printed on a rusty old Creality printer. And please believe me when I say that this case looks so much better in real life. The main inspiration and what actually started the idea of this build in the first place was actually a bunch of comments from one of my subscribers named Tim, continuously asking me over a long time in many different videos to make a wind tunnel case with dual 200mm fans, and this case is the result of that. So don't hesitate to ask for specific types of builds down in the comments section. Who knows, maybe my next project is inspired by your comment. Remember that the more comments and suggestions I get from you guys, the more likely it is that I'll get new ideas that can turn into new projects and videos for you guys. I think the grey and black details of the case just really blend in well with the rest of my otherwise black and grey setup and this is definitely my favorite build so far and it's going to be my main workhorse for a while. Speaking of workhorses, let's look at some temperatures. To test the CPU I used Cinebench and I was actually really surprised to see that the i9-10900K only reached a peak of 54 degrees Celsius after running at 100% for a while. And it's by far the lowest temperature I've ever recorded on this processor in any of my cases. The GPU on the other hand ran a little hotter. Running a Fermark stress test on the GPU it reached a temperature of 82 degrees which is quite hot but still within acceptable ranges. While gaming on the other hand, in Call of Duty the GPU stayed steadily in the low 70s with a max temperature of 73 degrees Celsius, which is actually not too bad. All these tests were performed in an ambient room temperature of about 25 degrees Celsius. As expected the CPU did get a lot better temperatures than the GPU, especially given that the design is made so that the CPU cooler actually gets the majority of the fresh air, but I still think the GPU temperatures are within ranges that at least I am comfortable with. And for me personally, the main temperatures I'll focus on are the CPU and the GPU gaming temperatures, as that's what I'll really spend the majority of my time using. As mentioned, I really like how this PC fits into my setup and I'm sure a lot of you guys have setups that could fit a case like this. If you're interested in downloading the 3D files for free, you can get them by checking out the printables link in the video description. I would love to hear your feedback in the comments section. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and if you're not subscribed, feel free to do so as well as there are many other cool projects coming down the road. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.